Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. Today we're going to learn how to paint the blue vase by Paul Cezanne. He painted it in 1889 and it's Impressionist. Uh, he was painting around the same time as Van Gogh and Monet. So the supplies you need are, you need some paper. I have watercolor paper here, but you can use whatever you have. Um, you need a pencil and you need an eraser Ooh. and uh, you need something to color with if you want to color it you don't have to I have some watercolors here we're gonna uh, do that after we finish drawing it now don't be intimidated by what looks like a super complex painting it's really not I'm gonna show you how to use general shapes and we are gonna draw this thing and you are gonna be happy with your result. We're not just gonna start drawing all of these complex flowers and stuff. We're gonna start with a couple triangles and a couple lines. It's all gonna be good. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. We're gonna start with a super easy part of this painting and that's just a couple of straight lines or as straight as you can make them. You can use a ruler, any kind of straight edge you want, or you can just draw them freehand like I am. We're just gonna do that, that lip of the table across the bottom. It's almost horizontal, but it's kind of tilted up a little bit. So I'm just gonna draw from a line from here to a little bit higher there okay i'm just going to do my best to draw a straight line don't worry about it if yours isn't perfectly straight it will be good enough and i'm going to draw the rest of it just one line a little parallel to it there you go so there's the bottom of our table we'll worry about the the back end of it after we get this vase in so Here's how we're going to do this thing that looks super complicated, okay? And you can generalize this to any vase of flowers. Um, it really helps just to, to, to visualize just where it sits and its basic shape. So first we're going to figure out where this vase sits. We're not even going to draw it yet. So let's see. It is, oh, what, here or so? We're just going to draw a little line right here. Draw it light. Is that close enough to the center? Yeah. Draw it light so you can erase it later, okay? Um, the same thing's gonna go for here. This one is what, about the halfway point? So I'm gonna put another line right here or so, and that's gonna be the top of it, okay? And that's all we're gonna worry about that for this, for, for this moment. Next up, we're gonna start with those flowers, okay? The, those top ones, the purplish ones at the very top, those kind of look like a triangle, don't they? So we're gonna draw a loose triangle generally where they are. And that's why we're gonna draw it light so we can erase it later once we draw the actual shapes in. So let's see, this guy about like that, All right? And then he comes down, ooh, that's a big one. And he comes down like that, and then like that. Okay, and that's all. We're just worried, we're just making a triangle. The next one is kind of similar, but he's like, hmm, just below it and he overlaps some. Okay, so he comes down, comes lower, about like that. And that's all we're gonna worry about those. Now you see how we're just breaking them down into little shapes where they are and we're gonna come back later and do the complex stuff. Okay, so below that is another flower. I'm just gonna kinda do general shape. We'll come in and draw draw it in more detail in a little bit. We just wanna know where it is and, it's, and what it kind of is shaped like. So we're gonna do this. This guy comes out like that. I'm just going with the outer bits. It's more like that. And then, let's see, that comes down. Good enough okay next let's see let's do this kind of easy part up next to this guy is this little oh twig with pretty little yellow things on it I think that um, in my case not knowing what kinds of flowers these are is working to my advantage because I'm just I'm more worried about the shape of them than anything and that really helps me out 
um, instead of being like, okay, I'm going to draw a lilac or something like that. That's, that's what you need to separate in your mind to be able to learn to draw is you just have to separate the shape, the line from it, the, the lines of it from the actual symbol of the thing that you're drawing that's already in your head. So anyway, we're going to go, this guy starts about here and he goes up here like that. And there's a little twig out here, or a little twig up here, and there's one, let's see, over here. And that's all we're doing with that guy. Next, we have this guy, another another one, but tipped with red, and we're just going to go whoop, whoop, and that's all we're doing with him. Next up we have, let's see, over here below this flower is this kind of bell-shaped thing, right? And then, but that comes down and that kind of, there's, ooh, that's rough. So this guy, just go do that. And then he comes over here and just does this kind of thing trailing off. And down here we have some flowers and we are going to do circles for the flowers. So we're going to start, there's this red one here that comes up about here. We're going to draw ovals anyway, All right? We're just going to make, that's about where he is. And then there's this guy kind of in the middle of these two, an oblong. And then here comes this big red, dark red rose. And he comes up about like that. And then there's some more white things down here and they just come around like that. And then this is a leaf. And then there's this guy. It's kind of almost like a perfect circle under there. Okay, and there are those flowers. And really all we have left is this big mass of dark leaves over here. So we're gonna do that. So there's one here, right? So it kind of starts like this and comes out and ends about here. And it just kind of boom and then like that. Oop, not quite like that. Comes up a little more like that. Okay. And then it comes back like that. And then to the tops of these flowers. And that pretty much is the basic shape of what we're doing here. Everything else we can draw in when we do the detail, which let's just go ahead and start. The first thing we're gonna do is this vase. So it has that fancy zigzaggy opening at the top, so I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to worry about going over this line or whatever. I can erase everything later. And remember, draw a light line until you're happier with happy with it, and then you can make it heavier if you need to. But I suggest if you're going to watercolor this that you keep your lines pretty light anyway. So I'm just going to make a little ripply thing. all along here. We'll see how much of that gets covered up. Hmm, actually I didn't bring those down enough, did I? Here's one of the beauties of uh, erasers. And these guys need to come down here. So this hits. I'm not going to really overlap them. I'm just going to make it bigger. And I think they are bigger. So this guy, yeah, that looks more like it. So I'm just kind of drawing the same shapes that I had before. It's just bigger. I think I had the, the size wrong there. Here's our leaf here. And then this guy comes around here. Okay, way better. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and on top of that I'm just going to make the top of this little zigzag. 
and there's the top of our vase. So it comes down, you can go ahead if you want and erase this line at the top because remember if you're gonna watercolor it afterward uh, it will not come out the the pencil you can't erase and once um, you get water paint on it and it just will not so this is your chance either do it now or come back right before you paint so there's the top of our fancy base um, it comes down let's see I'm not gonna worry too much about this it starts narrow right just like that right and it comes down a little bit like that okay and then it goes out out and then down angled in a little bit gathers not too high no gathers down here and then we put in this little saucer thing I didn't bring it down far enough Oop, there's our line I don't want to lose that we want to bring it down farther than that it's a pretty let's see there we go this will be better and then now we can meet our bottom. We're just going to make a little oval down here to show the bottom of the base. There we go, that one's okay. And I'm just going to firm up these lines really fast. Also not happy with this thing so I'm gonna try it one more time this All right and this guy like that it's just it it's weird is what it is so this is better okay better Okay, so here we have the vase done. Now we're going to worry about some of the details of the flowers and it's going to be easier than you think too. So up here we have these these purple things, right? I'm just going to do, um, it's base, basically three petals with some, uh, I don't know, little fluttery bits. So I'm just going to start drawing one petal like a leaf, right? And then to make a little flourish at the top where it kind of twisted, I'm just going to make a little loop up there that's tiny and now it looks like it twisted. And I'm going to bring down a line in the middle. Okay. This over here, I'm going to bring this up like that. that. Just do three of them. And then that comes down like that and this comes like that and that okay see I'm just drawing the shapes on the page and then for this side we're gonna do the same thing boom 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 I'm just following the shapes of this stuff Okay, the next one we're gonna do the, gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna make this central petal. It looks like a leaf, 
and then just do the little thing at the top because it's fun and we're going to draw this line down here. This one, boom, it's another little leaf looking thing and then I'm just going to bring it down. There's like a line going through there and then this one does the same thing but it runs into there and comes back and then for fun we'll just do that. And there are those two flowers at the top. We'll, we'll worry about the stems in a little bit. If you want, you can go ahead and erase these guidelines that you made. Okay, there are my two flowers. Next, let's do this part. I'm just gonna make this a line. You can make it two if you want, but for me, this is just one line. Okay, I'm just gonna draw little ovals where these uh, flower things are. There, there, there. You can draw more fewer if you want. Totally make this yours, that's good. For this, I'm gonna firm this up. And then I'm going to do one red one over here that's a little bit bigger, and then there. Okay, let's tackle these things over here. Let's see, this is, there's that, and it kind of comes up in a little thing. There's one over here, and then it comes down. And there's something else over here. If you know what any of these flowers are, please, please uh, say so in the library social media. I'm curious. I guess not curious enough to really look it up, but uh, it would be nice to know what they are. Okay, so this guy over here is kind of just an oval. And then this over here. Don't worry if you're not exactly on your guidelines like I'm not. It's going to pretend. Wait, that looks terrible. That is not what I was going for. Um, just pretend that um, your uh, guidelines are not there. I'm just doing it in the general area. Let's see, let's try that again. And this kind of goes down like that. There we go, that's better. And then this guy. I don't know what this guy is. This guy's just a thing. Um, we'll put some lines in it just because, like, looks like there might be one over here. Not straight. And then something down here. Okay, don't, this is not something you want to worry about. Okay, 
I'm going to go ahead and erase my lines. Or what's left of them. Okay. Oh, missed some. Okay. Next up, let's do this stuff. So there's this guy right there. And then he comes down. He's a bell, as far as I can tell. So there's that. And then we have this thing. He kind of comes in a little bit. And then this guy goes out, out. Yes, pedal, pedal, out. And then there's this guy next to him. He goes like that, like that, down, like that. And then there's our other flower. I don't quite know what's going on there, but you know, oh wait, this comes down like that. And then we have something pink in here. And then down here, we have this. Oop, is that low enough? Uh, yeah, we'll make it low enough. Um, and then this comes down like that. There we go. And then there's this little hanger on guy about like that. And there is that little part of it. Okay, I'm getting rid of my guidelines. Okay, now all we have left are these flowers and these leaves. So let's go ahead and do the leaves. And remember, um, you probably wanna be marking lighter than I am, even as you firm up your lines. I'm just, I'm making these dark so you can see them clearly. So for the leaves, we're just gonna do wide leaf shapes. Like there's this guy up here, right? And then there's another one over here. And then there's this guy. And then they all start overlapping. So just draw the leaves where you see them. That guy. Because we're just going to paint this and this part in green anyway. So don't worry too much about it. I'm just going to kind of cascade the leaves down toward this point down here. It's totally okay if you don't end up with as many leaves as I have or you have too many or whatever. It's all good. And I'm not going much wider than my guideline. Okay, 
push that off there. And then all this is just going to be dark under there anyway. And let's just do more for good measure here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so there are leaves. Now we are going to do the flowers down here. And these are just going to be general shapes of whatever these things are. So let's see, let's just make the petals for this red one, the bright red one. And it goes down against the leaves and then it comes in and then it goes out and down and around. All right. And that comes up and that other one hits up against it. So bring that down like that in down. There's one can bring this guy. This guy comes down like that. Okay. There's one. And in here, we're just going to kind of make the shapes that are in there. So I'm just going to do, there's kind of like a little circle situation going on in the middle. It comes down like that. And then a petal that goes about like that. And that's really it for that one. So we have this one that's next to it. It has this petal going out. And then it comes up against the leaves. And it comes down like that about. And then there's this shape, this pink shape in the middle. It almost looks like a heart. So I'm going to kind of make it look like a heart and then just bring it down like that. And then there looks like there's some kind of line there. And that's pretty much it for that flower. Okay. Here's this big rose over here. And this is kind of just comes out. And that goes there. And then let's see, there's this lighter part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And that is just kind of a leaf shape. And then from that we have, it seems like petals going out. So I'm going to do that. And that just goes back into it right there. Maybe one up here and one up here. And then down here, it looks like two flowers. So I can go ahead and put in our leaf. Our leaf is right here. And then let's see, we'll do this. These look like they're of this sort of that white one, which is pretty, pretty, uh, round. So we'll do this for that yellow bit. And it looks like it has some petals too. And bring that down and then there's one over here and then this guy is just on the side so it's going to show the side of this one and not much, not worry about much about that and we'll, we can put a little thing in the middle for that to show that yellow and there are those flowers so we didn't add there are a couple little um leaves over here but we can just think of those as filler so there's that one that's really hanging down and has two fronds on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. That one is going to come out about to here. And it's just going to come up and down and into the flower. Okay. So I'm just going to make the two fronds. I'm going to make a V and then bring this up and close and make my stem. There are also some others over here. So I'm going to make a leaf that goes like that. These are just the same leaves as these, just long. And then another one that goes like that. And then let's do one more for good measure. Okay, and that kind of be the back end of the face. So we had one up here though that comes, let's see, this comes underneath it like that, right? Like right underneath this stuff and it'll come down and meet these 
plants right here and then it can keep down like that okay so next we need to do the stems of these right and they're just long stems that come pretty straight down like that they're pretty wide for stems but they're still narrow for us drawing there's that one and then there's this one let's see and then these just seem like they kind of connect but they don't seem like the same flower so I'm just gonna do this number and give them their own really narrow one down here like that oops not that narrow. Okay. Let's see. Looks like something's behind this. I'm going to do, well, that's fine. Let's just do this and make sure this looks connected by something over there. And that looks connected and I think that is going to be oh look this guy has a little boom boom okay I think I'm gonna call this um, our uh, bouquet here it wasn't that bad was it no it was way easier than it looks from the beginning we need to connect this Anything that's, that doesn't look like it's connected, just make it look like it's connected. So, and I still have all those guidelines to erase, so I'm going to do that and firm up my lines where I need to. Okay, there's our vase. So I have hardened up all the lines. I've gotten out all of the guidelines that I can see. And now we get to do the easy parts because the rest is really pretty easy. So I'm going to decide where my line is going to go across for the back of the table and then we'll start adding other stuff. I'm going to draw this line lightly so I can draw over it. I just wanted to get the vase in first so we weren't drawing over that. So let's see, this guy is about here. I'm just looking at my reference and figuring out where it goes. Get another reference effect. Okay. This guy and then here or so? This one's almost straight across. So I'll do that and then I'm going to draw a line. Am I hitting that high enough? I'm not. You can also measure it. Let's see. Where does it hit this face? Here. Just draw this and that. Does it go up? No, it's straight. No, it's not straight. Start as straight as you can. If you want to, you can totally uh, use a straight edge again. As you see, I didn't. Okay, let's draw. These are apples below. I thought they might be oranges, but they are apples. So let's draw this apple next to it. We're not going to draw everything on the table. We're going to skip that plate, but uh, we're going to do most of it because this is the hard part right here. So I'm going to draw a circle. Not a perfect one on purpose. And then a little V for where the apple, for, for where the um, stalk is. So then we'll go ahead and do the other two over here. These are bigger. Do one here. V. And then this one seems like it's off um, to the side. So I'm just going to do that. And it comes in here and then back over there. And there are those two apples. Then we have this jar of ink, maybe, right here. 
He starts about here and he goes to about here. So at the top, so I just marked it just like I did that base. I'm going to do a little oval for the top. And then I'm going to come down this just like that vase but with a shorter neck and he comes out like that out like that I'm going to erase this line in the middle and then I'm going to add his label which all we have left is the window and the wine bottle. Um, let's go ahead, let's do the window. And this is just a straight line. It comes from about here and goes to here or so. I'm just going to draw as straight a line as I can. Again, you can use a straight edge. Let's draw a straight line. Down here. Okay. And then note the angle of that window goes down like that. We're not going to worry about that wall, but we'll do the window angling down like that. Just another straight line. And then the inside of the window, we have the window sill. So I'm just going to draw parallel lines to these two. Okay, now let's not quite right. Better. Okay, so yeah, I, w I looked at this for a little bit and I think it's window blinds. So this red here, I do this is almost straight across. So I'm going to do, where's it hit me here? I'm going to do, there's a narrow line and a wide one. Those will be dark red. And then there's the little line of the bottom of the blind right there. And there's our window. All we have left is over here is this wine glass. And this is going to be super easy. It's just kind of like half an easy version of that vase or that little ink jar or whatever that is. So I'm going to figure out where the bottom is. And the bottom is, we'll say, here. All right. And figure out where the top is. And the top is eh, here, maybe. Yeah, it's about here. So I'll do the top here, okay? So this is just gonna come down like that, right against your edge. It's gonna come here and then come out and then straight down again. And then this is gonna curve at the bottom. Not quite like that. This is only half of it. There we go. So there's our bubble one. I'm going to put a label on it. I'm going to do this a little bit down here, but I'm not going to. This is like a little. Here we go, a little line like that. I'm not going to do all the crosses up it. So let's just do the half of the label from about here. There. And there's our bottle of wine. I'm going to bring this neck down a little bit. I'm not entirely happy with that. Better. I like that better. Okay, that is pretty much it. If you want to be adventurous and draw that plate in behind this, um, these flowers go to. But this is our drawing. I like mine. I think it turned out pretty cool. It's It was way easier to do than it looked like it might be. Um, and now what we're going to do is have one last look and make sure that there aren't any spots left that need to be erased or the lines need to be firmed up, however you're going to do that um, be before you watercolor because once you start watercoloring there is no messing with these pencil lines. One other thing you can do if you don't want the pencil lines to show up so much is you can just erase them lightly so you can still barely see them. You just can't see them that well. Okay, 
Now you can paint this with whatever kind of paint you want to do. Um, this would be great for colored pencils, for watercolor pencils. This would be great for crayons. However you want to color this, go to. This would be great on canvas for acrylic paint um, or on paper for acrylic paint really. You can, you can do this however you want to do it. I just have this little watercolor set and I'm going to start painting. The number one rule I try to follow with watercolor, I say this every time, is not to let two colors run into each other because I didn't let the first one dry. So we're going to try and do this strategically again and see how that works. It's not, not, not the thing I'm best at. Okay, so we're going to start and let's go ahead, let's do this wine glass. I'm going to use uh, my brown and in my case it's burnt umber. Get a little bit of it because that's the only brown in there. If you want to be fancy, you can add a little yellow to it. So let's do this brown. And remember, watercolors dry lighter than they look like when you put them on paper. Next, I'm going to make the, those purple flowers. Now, I don't have a purple. So I'm going to have to make purple. You might have a purple that you can just use. But since I can't make a purple, the, the blue I'm going to use is going to be this one at the top. This is a cobalt blue. So I'm going to make it with that same blue. This is just for those flowers at the top. Get some blue. And now I'm going to get some red. Let's see. I think I'm going to do that pinky red. It's easier to mix a pink with a blue to get a nice purple with watercolor or a lot of paints than it is to mix a straight red with a blue. So I'm going to get my pinky blue. This is called Rose Permanent. It is just what came with this little watercolor kit. And I'm going to mix it with my blue. Okay, and remember, always test your colors. You don't want to have a color you're not happy with showing up on there. Let's see, a little more blue. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna put this blue up here on these big flowers with a small brush. There's our purple. I'm going to go ahead next and I'm going to put in those little bits of pink. And I'm just going to use this pinky red. Let's see, ah, I'm going to use the red, red watered down because that is a very ready pink. Okay, and that's how you lighten watercolor is you, you just use a ton of water. More water, less paint. And that's, you don't mix it with white, you just, more water, less paint. Okay, a little, little oops, is that the right one? Yeah, a little more red, a little more water. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna paint all the little places where there's pink. Okay, so those are our light pinks. This is pretty dark pink, and we'll come back to that when we can get this darker pink part of this flower. Hmm. Next, let's go ahead and do, let's see, I don't trust that yet. Um, we can go ahead up here and do these the reds of these flowers. It's just a dark red. Let's do the same thing that we did with the color wheel last time. I'll show you the color wheel again. Now remember to darken or to gray out a color, you add the color that's across from it on the color wheel, okay? So in this case, across from red is green. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mix a little bit of red into, uh, a little bit of green into red, like tiny, tiny, tiny bit of green into red to darken this red for us. So I'm gonna get red. I'm gonna start its own pan because this one isn't as diluted as the other one. I'm going to put a good bit in here because we can come back with this color later some more. And one nice thing about watercolor is if it dries, you can just wet it back. Get some red, clean off my brush. 
get some green. Let's see, I'm going to go with this deep green. Is this darker? Probably too much. Mm, too much. So we'll do it this. We'll just put more red in. You don't want too much or you'll end up with this brownie gray color. We don't want brown. This looks about right though. Let's see. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do these two. Ooh, that's a nice pop of color. Okay. And the only other, oh, we have dark red over here. We can go ahead and do that. Let's put in this dark red. And then we'll have this flower, but only after we are sure that's dry. It feels kind of dry to me, so it might be, might trust it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put in the red of this flower. I'm feeling this. This feels super dry to me. Don't do this unless it is dry. If it's not dry, blow on it, wait, use a hair dryer, whatever you need to do. Um, just wait till this is completely dry before you start messing with this. I'm going to skip the middle part where that yellow is. Well, that is all of our dark red, I think. I might put some in those apples up here, but we'll see about that. Let's see, what else can we do that won't touch anything that isn't dry? Now this is dry right here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that darker pink. And all I'm going to do for that is add more red to this pink color. This isn't that dark one that we mix. This is just pink. I still want it to be pink though, so I don't want too much red. And that's too much red. So I'm going to add more water. That's good. Darker, but not too dark. Let's see. And all of this up here, I'm going to paint this pink color. Okay, now to this little weird heart shapedy thing down here. And I think on that note, we should be able to get these, the two bright red flowers up here. There's this guy, and there's this back here a little bit, because this pink is dry. So I'm just going to go in, and this is just going to be bright red, like this little one. And I'm just not adding enough water to make it pink. Perfect. And that is most of our red. We're going to do, you see the top of this apple down here is red. Um, I'm just going to do the top right now. It's going to do this number right there and just make it, make it bright red. The rest of it is kind of orange and these are kind of orange over here. So we'll add a little bit of yellow and we got to do those. Speaking of yellow, we can at least start to get some yellow done. Um, this is going to be yellow. Now the yellow I'm using is an earth tone yellow. It's called yellow ochre. It's this color. Um, the way you can get this if you don't have a yellow ochre is you can add a tiny bit of brown, tiny tiny bit of brown into yellow, into whichever yellow you have, um, or else you can just paint it yellow. But there's a good bit of this um, color that is on our page. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. There are going to be a few rounds of this one. And be careful and don't get your hands in all this red stuff. Okay, so there's that yellow. And we can go ahead and do this little ink bottle here in the same yellow. Okay. And after that, you see the top of the table is... Um, oh, wait, we can do these little things up here. Let's do the these little flower things up here in that yellow. Also, the the... The table itself is light yellow, but this down here is a dark yellow. So we're going to go ahead and put that in down here with, with our dark yellow, the yellow ochre. Okay, and that is it for yellow ochre. So I'm going to go ahead and start on some of the green, but I'm not going to do all of it. Um, I'm going to use the dark green and start at the top left just just for getting not getting stuff on my hands
Okay, I've painted all this green and I discovered something that looks a little bit off to me. Can you see what that is? It's this gap right here. Like, no, no, there's something missing there. So I'm just going to go back with my pencil and add lines for where these flower stems would come down. And I'm going to paint all that in green so it can just kind of assume it's other stuff ba is back there. Okay, and for now that is it. We can go ahead, be safe, and put that dark yellow, the yellow ochre, and these little dots of the flowers. This one that one and that one and once that green dries we'll come back and add a little shadow to those flowers it'll make them look a lot better if we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint this stuff like a really really light yellow um, you can do it with a lightened up this color or a lightened up regular yellow um, I think I'm gonna go with a super duper light yellow ochre. We'll see what that looks like first. Little more paint, just a tiny bit. Let's test it. That looks good. Okay. So I'm going to paint this, this windowsill, and then I'm going to paint the um, surface of the table. There is our tabletop and um, our windowsill. Before I do anything else, I'm going to make 100% sure that everything in this painting is dry. Okay, everything looks to be dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tackle this vase. I'm just going to paint it blue. This is going to be the most concentrated blue of any of them um, on here. So use whichever blue you have. It's fine. The color I'm going to be using is co cobalt blue. And I'm just going to put this into one of my wells. Get it pretty concentrated. And then I'm going to paint my vase. Oops. Next, I'm going to add a wee bit of water to that blue that I mixed. Just a wee bit. Probably have to pull some more blue out too to paint the sky or whatever outside. Now I'm going to add more water to it. Uh, and I'm going to make a light blue. And we'll do that this that color but we're gonna do some other stuff too so I'm gonna paint this label very very light blue just just to make it not white pretty much okay and then we have all of these white flowers here and to make some differentiation to show some shadow what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little of this really light blue to them. And you'll see what I'm doing. I'm just making it shadow underneath the other stuff and just a little. Everything should be dry. There's that one. This comes under here. I'm just kind of following the colors in the painting. Okay, that's that. The next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do these apples down here. And they're pretty orange, aren't they? It's not just me, is it? So I'm gonna get my orange. Let's see, I'm gonna put it here. I have a very, very yellowy orange as I learned in the last art club. So I'm going to mix some red with it. It's 
a little bit more than that. You might not need to do that. Um, I definitely do. I'm gonna paint the rest of these kind of a, a reddy orange color. All we have left is we're gonna paint the the wall blue of a lighter blue than this stuff. So use a lot of water. And we're gonna add some shadows at the end by just adding a wee little bit of brown so everything looks like it's sitting on the table. But let's get this uh, wall done first. Make sure, again, everything is completely dry so you don't have colors running together. I'm gonna mix my blue. It's probably gonna be more water than blue. I just want a blue tint. Um, it's darker in the actual painting, but we really need to differentiate between these colors and with only a few colors to mix and using watercolor that can be a little bit difficult. But I'm gonna mix a ton of paint so I only have to do this once. Mostly water, get some paint. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, <laughs> we need more paint than that. That looks okay, this one right there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna paint the whole wall. There's my wall. Um, we're just gonna do one more little thing to make make the stuff look like it's sitting on the table and not just like floating somewhere. And we're gonna add a few little shadows. And these are gonna be super simple. I'm just gonna get brown. Actually, no, there's not enough brown still on there. Let's see, I got some brown. Okay, so I'm gonna test my brown. Let's see, do I have any yellow to test it on? Eh. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so here's all I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna put, let's see, I'm gonna put a wee bit of blue into the brown because I wanna gray it a little bit. So just a wee bit of the same blue, stick into this brown, and then I'll make it grayer, which is what we want. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's what we want. So I'm just gonna put in these shadows and all I'm gonna do is go around like that. And the light on in the painting appears to be from pretty close to the top. So I'm not even doing like major shadows. I'm just doing little shadows just that show that this stuff is there. Oh, too dark. gonna go out and around in kind of the same shape as what that is Let's see but to the right a little bit see doesn't that make like a world of difference just these tiny little shadows I think it makes a huge difference okay so th there are those. I'm also gonna add some down here. Add a wee bit more brown to that. A bit more blue. I want it a little bit darker. Okay. And here I'm just gonna go under the lip of the table, just like that. Not even much. Just bring some brown and blue under there and there's the shadow under the lip of the table now doesn't doesn't that look better with just those little little shadows we have a little a uh, couple little shadows on the uh, flowers I think this looks great and all I have left to do is to sun my work I'm gonna be very careful not to hit this white this uh, this wet part and there we have it this is a uh, blue vase by Cezanne, or our version of it. I think it turned out pretty cool. I hope you like yours too. And I hope you learned how you can simplify the shapes of stuff to make things that might seem really, really hard to draw, to make it much easier for you to understand and be able to draw it without being scared. So we're gonna peel these off. Oh, 
this is looking so nice. If you want to line it, you can. Like we have the others. I don't think I need to do that with this one. And by line it, I mean be be 100% sure that it's dry. And then go back over all the pencil lines with a pen of some sort. Um, a Sharpie works well, a Micron works well, a ballpoint pen would be great. Just be sure that your painting is 100% dry or you're going to have a bad time. Okay. And there we go. I like how this turned out. Thank you for joining me. And if you painted this or if you colored it or whatever, be sure and share uh, what you did, a picture of what you did with the library social media. Just like before, there is a traceable in the description. Just click that link and it'll take you to pretty much a coloring book page that you can transfer this yourself um, onto whatever surface you want to paint on or else you can just color it. That's cool too. But yeah, send us send us what a picture of whatever you did. We love to see this stuff. And uh, I hope to see you back next time at Art Club. Bye.